Sweden is a land of sustainability. It's a place where you can be as eco-friendly as you want, but still enjoy all the luxuries that come with modern life. Not wrongly, the country has set itself stricter climate targets than the Paris Agreement. By 2045, the energy must be 100% renewable and fossil-free. What is the country doing to achieve that? Let's get right into it. Sweden has a few advantages that make it a sustainable country. It is relatively sparsely populated, with 10 million people living in 500,000 square kilometers. There is therefore a lot of space for nature and forest. Forest that all captures CO2 as it grows. But the country is not resting on its laurels. It does several things to become as sustainable as possible as quickly as possible. Number 1. Green Steel Most striking is their attempt to make green steel. Normally, the production of steel requires energy, and coal is needed as a raw material for the steel process. SSAB is now working on techniques to generate the necessary heat with hydrogen. If successful in the planned time, Sweden will be the first country to supply green steel. This steel already exists in small quantities. Car manufacturer Volvo, which is also Swedish, used it in a construction vehicle. Number 2. Sustainable Cars the bus, car, truck, and delivery vans must be climate neutral by 2030. That means they should, at the very least, run on a biofuel. This has been the case for buses in Stockholm since 2017. There is no longer any public transport that runs on fossil fuels. The challenge is greater for other sectors, especially heavy transport. The advantage of Sweden? The gigantic forests provide a lot of biomasses, which you can also use to make green diesel. What is striking is that these green ambitions do not necessarily permeate the local car industry. Volvo was one of the last car brands to announce an electric model. However, the sister company, Polestar, is working on a car that costs no net CO2. Number 3. Oat Milk The Swedes, even more than the Dutch, love a bowl of consolation. Fika, the tradition of coffee with a pastry, is part of the culture. That coffee contains oat milk more and more often. In this respect, too, Sweden differs little from the Netherlands. But that oat milk often comes from Sweden. The most famous brand of this type of milk is Oatly, a company that has its origins in the Scandinavian country. It's no coincidence that this company was one of the first to make oat milk on a large scale. Oat milk is in fact a Swedish invention. Richard Oss developed this type of milk in the 1990s. Number 4. Sustainability through Urban Farming Imported veggies make up more than half of Sweden's annual consumption of fruits and vegetables. That is perhaps one of the reasons why there has been such a surge in interest in urban farming in recent years. It's all about making farming more accessible to the general public. It doesn't get much more up close and personal than what you see in the video up top, which shows a grocery store producing veggies right in front of the store entrance. Additionally, the practice of vertical farming is gaining popularity. Gronska is a food technology firm with its headquarters in a suburb of Stockholm. The company cultivates herbs and vegetables inside, stacking potted plants to great heights on shelves. Extra benefits include continuous production throughout the year, making use of less resources, both land and water, and moving the source of food closer to the point of consumption. Number 6. Climate Smart Sharing and Caring Segi Park in the southern city of Malmö is a new model for sustainable and ecological urban development, combining affordable housing with a focus on building a local sharing economy. The idea is to make it easier for residents to share goods and services, so that they own less but at the same time have access to more. A wooden parking garage is part of the plan. Apart from parking spaces for cars, it will include a bicycle parking, a bicycle kitchen, where residents can go to fix their bikes, and a mobility pool, where residents can rent cars and bikes from a shared pool. The vision of the Sege Park project is to create a new tranquil community in a green area near the city center, relying on renewable energy production to create a district free from carbon dioxide emissions. This historical hospital park is going to have around a thousand new residents built on it through a combination of renovations and brand new construction. It is the first project in Malmö to get certification from SQL, which is an international evidence-based sustainability evaluation methodology. Number 7. Smart Roads for Charging on the Go The Swedish island of Gotland has opened the world's first wireless electric road, where electric trucks and buses can charge while driving. Electric power is transmitted to the electric vehicle through induction, a technology that uses electromagnetic fields, similar to how an electric toothbrush charger works. The first fully operational bus using the wireless charging infrastructure was launched in 2021. 
One of Sweden's climate goals is to reduce emissions from domestic transport by at least 70% by 2030, compared with 2010. As part of these efforts, the Swedish Transport Administration, Trafikverket, has been commissioned to develop a plan for how 2,000 kilometers of the country's busiest roads can be electrified by 2030. Number 8. Climate Smart Cities By 2050, two-thirds of the world's population will live in cities, according to the UN, and Sweden has one of the fastest rates of urbanization in Europe. The capital of Stockholm is growing so quickly that all kinds of challenges need to be met. Its 1950s motorways are overcrowded, and millions of people need to be supplied with clean water, clean heat, and clean energy. In the developing world, the solution has often been to build more homes on forest and farmland. But in 1995, the city of Stockholm decided instead to found the world's first urban national park and protect its green spaces. Several old industrial areas have been and are being redeveloped as efficient low-energy housing, and the city has extended its tram routes. Number 9. Show me the cans. Swedes recycle about 84% of their used plastic drink bottles in aluminum cans. Everyone who buys a plastic bottle or can has to pay a minor deposit, a deposit that consumers get back when they recycle the empty bottles and cans. Despite the seemingly high recycling degree, there's still room for improvement. The target for drink bottles and cans is 90% recycling. The Swedish deposit return system is managed by Returpack, a company owned by the country's retailers and drink producers. Consumers take their bottles and cans to a pantautomat, a sort of reverse vending machine, in their local supermarket. There is often the choice of getting the deposit back or donating it to charity. The recycled bottles and cans are then transported to a hub in the city of Norrköping, where they are recycled and turned into new bottles and cans every year. This sustainable recycling solution is one of Europe's oldest schemes. All drink bottles and cans ready for consumption must, by law, be included in an approved recycling system before being marketed in Sweden. Number 10. From resource economy to bioeconomy. In addition to cutting emissions, a significant component of the economic transition plan that Sweden is pursuing involves undertaking concerted efforts to make use of natural processes in the production of energy, industrial goods, and a variety of other things. This so-called bioeconomy entails a great deal more than simply making things less harmful to the environment. Sweden is leading the way in the development of innovative techniques for the use of natural materials that are entirely recyclable and can be incorporated into the cradle-to-grave process. The natural resources that Sweden possesses are plentiful and environmentally friendly. The majority of the energy that is used currently originates from renewable sources, and its well-managed forests already provide the majority of the EU supply of wood products. Well, that's it from this video. What do you think about these sustainable practices of Sweden? Do you think Sweden is all set to achieve climate neutrality by 2030? Share your thoughts by commenting below. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and share this video with your friends to help spread awareness. Also consider subscribing to our channel for more interesting videos every week.